Uh, welcome from Sunny Sterling, and uh, it's good that we're being joined again by Vincent from China and others as well. So welcome to our time together on Zoom, and we're thankful for being able to meet today. So, uh, so let's pray together. Let's commit our time to God. Gracious God, we thank you for the words we've just been singing. You are the God who is able to help us in every storm we face in this life. In our experience, you can change the storm into a calm at your command and will. We can experience peace that passes all understanding because you are the Prince of Peace. And Lord, we think of those today who are going through their own personal storms at this time. We think of uh, our friend Margaret Lovett, who would normally be with us today, but who is in hospital in Edinburgh waiting for major surgery planned for tomorrow. Lord, we pray that um, this surgery would indeed go ahead, having it been cancelled already twice. And not only that it would go ahead, Lord, but that it would be successful. And uh, Lord, that Margaret would be back with us soon. soon. We pray, Lord, that we would see her here on Zoom, Lord. She's been such an encouragement to us. Uh, and uh, your word says that you will honour those who honour you. We commit others, Lord, to, to you also today who are going through their own storms of sickness, of uh, bereavement, those worried about their situations that seem impossible to resolve without your intervention. May we today, Lord, look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who promises never to leave us nor to forsake us. And we thank you for good news too, uh, Lord, for those who have come through operations and treatment. We celebrate also with the Murchison family uh, as uh, we celebrate Sarah's marriage to David. May they know your blessing as they commit to each other forever, forever Lord, in sickness and in health. Bless all marriages, those that are solid and those, Lord, that may be going through times of testing. Lord, bless and protect us from the evil one who seeks to destroy and uh, put us under what you have joined together. We pray for those persecuted for their faith today. May they know blessing in the midst of their storms. May their anchor hold in the face of trials and testing. And Lord, again, we commit to you those suffering through this pandemic throughout the world. Lord, you are speaking, but are we listening? Let him who has an ear listen to the voice of God today. Lord, there are so many situations that overwhelm us, but we know we can come and cast our burdens on you, for you care for us. Revive us, Lord. Relieve suffering. Restore righteousness in our nation and throughout the world. Speak to us, Lord, as we come to you. As we read your holy word now, and we ask all things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. So um, we're going to read from Matthew's Gospel today, uh, as mentioned, uh, where the disciples were in the midst of a storm and Jesus came uh, to meet them. And uh, we're going to read from Matthew chapter uh, 14, two verses from the beginning, and then we'll read uh, verses uh, 30, uh, sorry, 20, uh, 13 to 33. So Matthew's Gospel, and again, uh, Nikki is going to read for us today. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard about the fame of Jesus, and he said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why these miracul miraculous powers are at work in him. And moving to verse 13. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now, when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate place and the day is now over. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, they need not go away. 
you give them something to eat. They said to him, we have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and they all ate and were satisfied and they took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him saying, oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And then when they got into the boat, the oh, wind ceased and those in the boat worshipped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. Amen. May God bless this reading to us. Amen. Thank you, Nikki. And before, so let's turn back then to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 14, and uh, we'll go through uh, the section that we read together. And this particular chapter in Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 14, is presented as a day in the life of Jesus, and what a day it was. At the beginning of the chapter, we read that Herod Antipas, who ruled over Galilee, heard of the fame of Jesus, of his miracles and his teaching. And Herod, who had earlier condemned John the Baptist to death, was afraid. He said to his servants, this is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. Now, Herod didn't realize who Jesus truly was. Foolishly and superstitiously, believing him to be a returning spirit. John the Baptist was not raised from the dead, but later Jesus would. He would be resurrected. John had been the herald, the voice declaring the coming of the Lord, and his ministry gave way to his Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Of course, Jesus heard all that Herod said of him. And Jesus was on his guard, and he withdrew to a desolate place by himself. However, this time of solitude was short-lived, for soon a crowd gathered around him, coming on foot from the nearby towns. And when Jesus saw them, he had compassion on them, and he healed their sick. Then when evening came, he miraculously fed a multitude, over 5,000 men plus women and children, with five loaves and two fish. Then Jesus, physically and mentally drained, again sought quiet time with God his Father. And this is where we pick up the narrative. 
And we'll look at this under three headings today, solitude, storm, and savior. But first of all, solitude. So following on from this great miracle, Jesus immediately made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he himself dismissed the crowd. So his disciples were to sail across the Sea of Galilee towards Capernaum while the people were to return to their homes. For in John's Gospel, we read there in chapter 6, perceiving that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. They were wrong in seeking to crown him king. For the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. And we'll look at this in detail, God willing, next week. It is a spiritual kingdom. Later, Jesus rejected the world's version of kingship, saying, my kingdom is not of this world. So here Jesus went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when evening came, he was there alone. Messiah still and all alone. Now, there's examples of his prayer life found throughout the Gospels. Mark, at the very beginning, tells us, and rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he, that's Jesus, departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. Luke in chapter 5 says he would withdraw to desolate places and pray. Luke chapter 6, in these days, he went out to, to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. So Jesus prayed, and he taught his disciples to pray. They were to pray collectively, they were to pray privately, as Jesus did here at one with the Father. And friends, of course, we've all experienced times of isolation during this pandemic. We've been cut off from family and friends, but not from God. Many have used this time to deepen their relationship with God through prayer. And that's true of this congregation, as we've met uh, for days and nights of prayer. Times, too, on our own, times of solitude. And these can be positive times, not negative times in the Christian walk. There can be times of blessing, times of intercession, times of intimacy with God. So in all the storms of life, even this pandemic, let us remind ourselves that we are not alone, that God is with us. And that brings us to our second point, storm. Verse 24, the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. Now in Mark's account, we read that Jesus saw that they were making uh, headway painfully. It was, a, it, was a, it was a struggle for them. And these seasoned fishermen were well aware that storms rose suddenly and violently in the Sea of Galilee. Indeed, there were times when they feared for their lives. And we read of that occasion earlier in this gospel in Mark, sorry, Matthew chapter 8, when Jesus got into the boat, that his disciples followed, followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves. But he was asleep. And they went and awoke him, saying, Save us, Lord, for we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even winds and sea obey him? Despite the fact that only God could control his creation, the disciples had at this point failed to fully grasp who Jesus really was. But they would be given another opportunity to do so when they again experienced his prayer. And that's here. The disciples had rowed three or four miles and they were facing horrendous weather conditions. It was a, 
as we would say, it was blowing a hoolie and the waves were crashing onto the boat. They had battled on for several hours when in the fourth watch of the night, between three and six in the morning, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. And the appearance of a figure on the water caused these disciples to be terrified. They thought, well, there's no way it could be Jesus. Like Herod, they were thinking of ghosts and spirits. But it was Jesus. And it was Jesus walking upon the waves. Another miracle. And like the feeding of the 5,000, he's displaying his divinity and control over, his na over nature. And on hearing their cries, Jesus immediately sought to re reassure his disciples, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Now, by using this phrase in the Greek, ego I me, it is I, or literally I am, Jesus revealed his true identity, that of the great I am. This was the name through which God had chosen to reveal himself to Moses at the burning bush when he said, I am who I am. And again in Deuteronomy 32, see now that I, even I am he, ego I me, there is no God besides me. And throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus laid claim to this divine title. In John's Gospel, we read the words of Jesus in chapter 8. Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Ego I me. Not I was or I have been, but I am. Emmanuel, God with us. And John also records that when the soldiers and officials came to arrest Jesus in Gethsemane, they fell back under the power of his words. And what were these words? Ego I me. I am. I am he. And of course, it's also in John's gospel that we find the, the seven I am sayings of Jesus. I'm sure we can remember them all. I am the good shepherd. I am the bread of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the gate. I am the light of the world. I am the true vine. I am the resurrection and the life. So do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? The Word who became flesh and made his dwelling in our midst. Will you accept Jesus as your Lord and Saviour? If so, he will come to you and help you in whatever situation you find yourself today. Just as he came to the disciples, he can come to you in your storm. And you will experience his presence and his peace as his disciples did here. For he said to them, take heart, it is I. And then he said, don't be afraid. God is love, and perfect love casts out fear. And we are reminded of the reassurance that God gives to his people through the prophet Isaiah. Wonderful words in Isaiah 43. Do not fear, don't be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Friends, come to the Savior today, as we see Peter coming to the Savior in this reading. Because Jesus promises to all who trust in him, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And that takes us to our third heading, Savior. Now, Peter 
deciding to share in this experience, cried out, Lord, well, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Now, Peter's personality comes to the fore. He's impulsive and he's imperfect, yet he's displaying great faith. And Jesus responded, come. And that's what Jesus says to us all. Peter, weighed down with worry, come, Peter. Come, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest, says Jesus. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. Now, it is only Matthew who records this for us. It took great courage and faith for Peter to step out of the boat in the midst of the raging sea. But at this point, he was totally and absolutely focused on Jesus who had said, come. It was when he shifted his gaze that the waves of doubt swept over him, literally. For we read, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Short prayers are long enough. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? The very words he used in the previous reading that we had with him coming and calming the storm. Why are you afraid? Why are you doubting? Yes, Peter had faith. Yes, he had his doubts. But isn't that so true of all of us? But in the midst of the storm, Peter cried out to his saviour, Lord, save me. And the Lord reached out and took hold of him. And friend, whatever storm you face today, you too can call to Jesus, Lord, help me. Lord, hear me. Lord, heal me. Lord, save me. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. The storm was over. This was a repeat of the miracle they had experienced before. But this time they didn't say, what kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves are being. Instead, those in the boat worshipped Jesus, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. And of course, these are the very words that the Roman centurion used at the cross of Calvary when Jesus had taken upon himself the sins of the world. This man truly was the Son of God. And friend, it is so important today that you see Jesus as more than a man, that you acknowledge him as the Son of God, who left the glory of heaven to come and rescue sinners like us. Do you see yourself as a sinner? Do you see yourself as needing saving? Will you accept Jesus as your saviour? Jesus said in Matthew 7, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had, found, had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a crash. 
Jesus is the rock, the foundation on which to build your life and the life, the lives of your family. This is true wisdom. Can you say today, as for me and my house, my household, my family, we will serve the Lord. Can you say, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Like Peter, we often shake on the rock. But praise be to God, Jesus Christ, a rock, is firm and sure. For we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. Isn't that amazing? And then we read, and when they had crossed over, they came to the land at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognised him, they sent word around to all the regions and brought to him all who were sick and implored them that they might only touch the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched were healed. A day in the life of Jesus. Wow. What's a day like in your experience? as you seek to serve Jesus. May we all come and trust in him today through the storms. He is Lord, Lord of all. The Lord is my salvation. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you are with us in the storms of life, that you give us your peace even in the midst of the storm that you ask us to have faith, to trust you, to hold on to you as you ask us to come with our burdens, with our fears, with our phobias, Lord. You say, me fobu, do not fear, for I am with you. Bless us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray now for the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to rest and remain with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. So just for a moment in silence, we can commit our situation to God, whatever that situation may be, whatever storm we're facing. We would ask God to bring peace and his presence to help us in these situations. Lord, we thank you that you've heard our prayers. You know our situations. You are an ever-present help in time of trouble. We commit the rest of this day, your day, uh, to, to you, Lord, and to, to us to be a blessing, Lord. May a day and our experience be one where we worship you and work for you as we wait for your return. We ask all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.